welcome to another video on our series on the following object game. In this video we're going to be looking at lives, player lives. So currently in our game when we play it, um, we can now shoot our object and score some points. But when the object hits the player, uh, we want the player to lose one of his lives. Alright, so first thing we're going to need to do is actually give the player some lives. He currently doesn't have any lives. So in the player script, that's going to be a variable that we can set up here. So let's make that an integer. We'll just call this lives. And this will be... This is the number of lives the player has. Okay, so we've got a place to store lives. We can set lives equal to whatever we want to at the beginning. We can do that out in the inspector. We can do that in here uh, at the start. We'll probably just set it here for now. We'll say lives is equal to three. We'll give ourselves three lives before we die. Okay, so that's all set up. So now what we need to do is we need to think through what has to happen in our game. So uh, when my falling object falls down the screen and hits my player, so if we don't manage to shoot him, when that collision happens with the player, we want to take one away from the player's lives. Now we're already doing some collision between the player and the falling object, where uh, currently we just have the falling object being reused up at the top again, just moving back up. So that is in our falling object script, and it's on trigger enter 2D function. Um, we're saying if it's the bullet, we're doing all this. If it's any other object, we're just moving it to the top. Well, now we have another object we want to do something special with. So we're going to have to do another one of these compare tags to see if what we hit is now the player. All right, so um, that means the player is going to need to have a tag that we can check. So we'll go back over to Unity and make sure the player has a tag. So the player currently is untagged. So remember, I can drop that down. There is actually a pre-made one for the player with a capital P player here. So we'll just go ahead and use that one. So now he is tagged as player with a capital P. And then we'll go into our script, and we can um, start another if statement here that's similar to the bullet one. We can say if the other object, if it's tagged, so we'll check uh, I'm sorry, compare, we'll compare his tag, and this time we're going to look for player with a capital P. Got to spell that exactly the way that it is uh, out in the uh, inspector there. All right, so if it's the player that we hit, this time what we want to do is, uh, it would probably be good to do our explosion again. So maybe what we'll do is we'll make this thing explode any time it hits anything that we want it to have a collision with. So instead of putting this explosion code in two places, let's actually just move this. So I'm just going to cut it out of here, and I'm just going to paste it down here. Okay, we're always going to move it to the top in the collision, and let's always just make the explosion. So that'll happen now. Anytime we hit any object, we'll get an explosion. Uh, up here with the bullet, we're still destroying the bullet, and we're still scoring our points. So here now, what we want to do is we want to... Uh, we want to tell the player to lose a life. He's been hit. He needs to lose a life. That's what we want to put there. So we're going to use a similar uh, a way of doing this as we did to scoring points. We're going to go ahead and send the player a message, and we're going to send it to some sort of a function that we'll put in the player script that will tell it that it's been hit and it needs to lose a life. So. Uh, let's go over to the player script and write that function so we know what message to send. So in our player script, let's go down here. So here's our score points. Let's go ahead and slide another function in here. Um, uh, we'll call this lose life. So lose life will be called from the falling object script. Uh, when a collision occurs between a falling object and the player. 
Okay, so just putting a little explanation up there so we remember what the purpose of this function is. This is going to be a void function. We'll call this lose life. And we'll drop in our brackets here. And uh, what we're going to do here now is um, when we get hit, we're going to take a life away. So we'll say lives minus minus. Minus minus, again, is just a shortcut for saying lives uh, equals lives minus one. So basically, we're just subtracting one from whatever lives currently is and saving it back in the variable. It's just a shortcut way of writing it. Um, but uh, let's just say this subtract one from our lives. Okay, so that will cause us to lose a life. So now we know that the message we want to send is lose life. So back over in our falling object script, let's send a message to the player. So we already know what the uh, player is. We have a link to that. So player dot, we're going to do our send message. The message we're going to send is lose life because that's the name of the function that we want it to run over there. Okay. Um, so let's see. Player send message lose life. Okay. Oops, so got an extra set of quotes here. That's why I had that red line there. Okay. So now whenever we get hit by something that's tagged as a player, so the following object hits the player, it will send a message to the player to run its lose life function. The player script will then catch that event and it will take one away from its lives. Let's go test this out and see if it works the way we think it should. So let's move this, well, not the player. Let's move our falling object back up here a little ways and let's just let it hit us. And we're gonna watch on the player here to see if the lives change. So when this starts, you see lives filled in with three because we did that in our start function. So when it hits us, we get the explosion, so that worked still, and our lives went to two. So it took a life away. If we keep playing this and let ourselves get hit a few more times, now I got lives one, now lives are zero, now lives are negative one. So you notice it's taken one away each time. So as you probably have already thought here, uh, the next thing we have to do is handle what happens when we run out of lives. So lives, uh, once they hit zero, we're out of lives. Right now I can keep playing because I'm actually not stopping the game when that happens. So that will be our next job is to um, have the computer know what to do when we run out of lives. So over here in our player script, whenever we lose a life, we're going to want to then check to see if we have any lives left. So when we take one away from lives, next thing we want to do is check to see if we have any lives left. Alright, so that's going to be a conditional statement, an if statement. We're going to ask a question here. The question will be, are lives greater than zero? Actually, let's ask it if we're, check to see if we're out of lives. Okay, so we'll say uh, if lives are less than one. Okay, so that means that uh, we're at zero lives are lower. So let's change this to say check to see if we have uh, check to see if we are out of lives. That's that's what I want to ask there. So lives less than one. If that's true, we're out of lives. Okay. So that means we're going to have to take some action here. So once we're out of lives, uh, it's kind of game over. Um, you know, let's. Uh, find out if we're going to play some more, start over, whatever we want to do here. Okay, For now, let's just send a debug.log just to test out to see um, if uh, this is actually working the way we think it should. Okay, So we'll just say out of lives. When we run out of lives, we'll send that little message to ourselves so we can just test this out. So let's test this out real quick. And we run out of lives, it should tell us that we're out of lives. So, okay, so we're at two, one, zero. See how I got an out of lives message now? So every time I get hit after this, I'm going to get that message again. Okay, still haven't stopped us from playing, but at least now I am triggering some code somewhere that says, wait a minute, we're out of lives, we have to do something. 
So that's the next thing we'll take a look at is what do we do when we run out of lives? All right, so we've got it telling us that we're out of lives when we run out of lives. And what we want to do now is actually um, cause our game to stop running and uh, kind of handle what happens when the game is over. So what we're going to do here is when our lives uh, fall less than one, uh, we're going to call a function that's going to handle uh, what happens when our game is over. So let's just go right down here in the bottom of the player script and make a new function. Let's be a void function, and we'll just call this game over. All right, so when game's over, what we're going to do is, uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to cause the player to explode. So player explodes. All right, and then after the player explodes, what we want to do is we actually want to uh, make the player disappear. We're going to turn off his game object. So we're going to, um, uh, let's say, make player disappear uh, and be disabled so that the uh, there's no controls or anything that would um, happen with our game. And then eventually, we'll need to um, put some sort of message on the screen. We're going to do all the UI, user interface, uh, labels on the screen, text on the screen, um, soon, not in this video, but soon. Uh, so at some point we're going to have to handle, you know, putting up on the screen, game over, whatever. Okay, so we'll handle that later. So we want to have the player explode, and then we want to make him disappear and be disabled uh, so that we can't continue to play the game after we run out of lives like we can now. So to make the player explode, we can reuse that same explosion we're using on the uh, falling object. So let's make a variable up here to hold it. We're going to instantiate an explosion, so we just need to have a link to it. So we're going to need a public game object. Not a public game over, but a public game object. Uh, and we'll call this our explosion. All right. Link to the explosion prefab for our explosion. Uh, and then uh, we'll fill that in the inspector here in a minute. Then back down here, if we wanted to explode, what we want to do is instantiate an explosion. So instantiate, we want to make an explosion. And we want to put it right where the player is right now when he runs out of life. So we'll just feed it in the transform dot position of the player. Uh, and then we'll give it the uh, transform dot rotation of the player. So that'll cause the uh, explosion to be instantiated, which uh, will, the explosion makes its noise and plays its system and stops. Uh, so we'll have that happen. And then to disable the player, what we're going to do, let me save this and go out into Unity. Um, what we're going to actually do here is we're going to turn the player's game object off. So up here in the inspector, you see this check mark up by the name? If I had checked that, the player disappears. Okay, he's still in the scene. See, he's still here in the hierarchy, but this turns off his game object, which turns all this off. It'll turn his, his uh, script off. It'll turn uh, his collider off, his rigid body, his audio. So um, for all intents and purposes, he's no longer here. All right, and he won't interact or, or do anything. We won't be able to move him around or control him in any way. Like if I hit play here now, and the game is running, I can't move the player. You see, he's right here. But when I push my keys, he doesn't move, he doesn't shoot, he doesn't do anything. Okay, so um, we can see that he's not actually uh, doing anything in our game. So that uh, is, is what we're going to do. So when he's dead, we're going to in code we're going to make it come in here and basically just turn him off and then when we get to how to restart the game later on uh, then we'll just make sure that he gets turned back on so that he's ready to go again so to do that we just use a command we would say uh, game object so this will be the game object that the scripts attached to the player and then we'd see, use a command called set active set active uh, takes a boolean value, a true or false, and it activates or deactivates the object. 
So I can, if I put a false in here, what I'm saying is uh, turn this game object off. Okay. So set active false means turn them off. Uncheck that box that's up there. So when that happens, we should get an explosion. He should disappear. All right, so now that we've got our game over function all set up to do what we want it to do, we actually have to call it. So up here in lose lives, when we run out of lives, instead of doing this debug, we can get rid of that now. We know that that's working. We'll just call our game over function. Okay, so when lives are less than one, we'll call game over. Game over will make the explosion, turn our player inactive so that he's gone from the scene for now. And that will be how we end our game. So let's go into Unity here. Okay, so the only thing we have left to do here now before we test this out is to go to the player and we have to actually feed him in the explosion prefab so that he can make his explosion. So we'll just find him in our project panel. Here he is. Our explosion, we'll just drag and drop that over here into the explosion uh, variable spot here in the player script. And now we should be able to test this out and we'll get hit three times here and then we should explode so let's see what happens here here it is all right we exploded and there we go uh, all our objects are just going to keep on falling uh, eventually what we'll do is we'll pop up some sort of a message here game over maybe put the final score or um, whatever we have happen here at the end give them a couple of buttons to push so that they can quit the game or play again or go back out to the menu or whatever we decide to do with that so that is uh, how we can make our game stop when our player is killed all right so i think that's enough for this video here on lives uh, the next thing we'll take a look at in the next video is um, adding in uh, some more of these falling objects so we don't just have one but we have several uh, and we will uh, maybe tweak a few things there uh, and then we'll move on uh, after that and in the next video after that we'll talk about how to do the UI the user interface where we put the text and the labels and the buttons and things on the screen so as always I hope you've been enjoying the videos and that they're being helpful to you if you have any questions uh, feel free to leave a comment below uh, and uh, don't forget to subscribe so you can get notifications when we put new videos up uh, as we continue to build projects in game design thanks for watching